Hey guys, good morning. This is Jim with South Florida Power Wash regarding repairing the diaphragm pump on your chem caddy. Generally, it never needs repaired, but uh, sometimes you'll get some debris in there if your filter falls off or if you're just careless and you suck up a little bit of grass or whatever, it'll get into the diaphragm pump and it won't work properly. So I've got two pumps right here, uh, right here on either side of the pump. Um, I'm going to actually just pull this off here because I've already got the screw off. The screws off. I wanted to point out real quick here just some tools. Uh, I've got a screwdriver right here but I filed it down so there's no sharp edges and this is what I like to use to remove this right here. Your regular Phillips head, maybe a popsicle stick and some tweezers. Uh, those are some tools that I like to use when I do this. So anyway here we go. I've already got this unscrewed and I'm gonna pull it straight up and I'm gonna point some things out and I recommend that you take still shots or photographs. I'm going to turn it over. Do you see that little dot right there? That uh, holds the spring right in place on the left side of the pump as you're facing it. Okay. And I'm going to bring this up a little closer. There's two poppets. One and one on the other side. And they are on the underside of this diaphragm. And as you can see, both sides are different. And this side right here, because it has a spring, is because this pop, it rides up and down and allows the water to exit to your trigger gun. So now that I've showed you this, you may want to take a screenshot. Okay, got it. And get that out of the way for you guys now. Now I'm going to bring this pump into play right here. We're going to rebuild this pump. I don't really like to call it rebuilding, but you need to understand how it goes back together. So I have it partially broken down. So here's that spring. That's on the top, and I'm gonna put this in these parts in some sort of container where it doesn't roll off your table. I'm gonna put it all right there. I'm gonna set this one aside over here. I'm gonna take this spring right here. I'm gonna show you guys everything here. Uh, just as this sits right now, I'm gonna remove this. I want you guys to see the difference. Here's the top, here's the bottom. The spring always goes over the round port right there. It just sort of rides on it right there. Now that we've got that pointed out here. Now if you're looking straight down, it's different. Okay? I'm going to pull this back. And I want you to know how I got this out. It's wedged in there really well. So with the screwdriver, it's really, really dull. And I push in from the side like this. And I'm able to pull it up. And then I just sort of work it up right like this and I'm gonna tuck it back okay you have an inlet and a discharge here and if you look straight down into this hole I'm not gonna turn on a flashlight right now uh, you can do that uh, I'm gonna look for any kind of debris with my tweezers it could be hair it could be a slight piece of grass it could be anything that got pulled into your uh, your diaphragm so I'm actually shining the light in there and I'm picking out whatever I can here and that usually solves the problem because you can see the other side from this side and this is actually easy, uh, can be worked on while the chem caddies all put together where you put your cooler up on its side but I just want to show you the difference in the parts here in case it all comes apart look at this other side right here do you see the star that tells you that the spring goes on the opposite side and it's the same piece as this but facing the other way so this is different than this one and I'm gonna push this one straight out where the other one is on the other side okay this is the left side and this is the right side you're gonna see a difference because the ridge is up here on this one and the ridge is on the bottom of this one here so we're gonna set that aside this is where the photographs come in now you can see the opposite effect where we have this poppet facing the other way with the spring for this side of the pump. And then on this side of the pump right here, don't know if you can see me, there's that little black node sticking up, which is the exact same thing as what you have right here by my thumb. So what I've done is I've tucked this back and I'm cleaning it out with the tweezers. I'm looking in there. You're gonna find something in there. And this is the main reason why the pump will not push or take prime. So we're gonna now put it back together now that we've cleaned it out. We're going to do the right side of the pump, and I'm going to just tuck this back, 
and put the spring right over that and it should stand straight up. This is the easiest way to put it back together. You try to do it while it's floating in your hands, it's just difficult. So, star end up, remember? Okay, now that we're doing that right there, we know that, let's see here, just seeing here, just making sure we uh, do everything properly here. All right, I'm actually looking. Okay, this is the left side of the pump because this sits on the top and I can see the ridge. So this one right here, we put over the top and it's gonna float in the air. And there it is floating in the air. So at this point, I'm sorry people, I need to do this. I push it through, okay? And I'm gonna bend the spring in and straight down. And I'm gonna get it in place with my tweezers and see how it popped right up? It's perfect, okay. Now, what we do now is I'm just gonna push this down a little bit into the seat. Now the other side, we just have three more components. We have this seat. Remember, this ridge right here will be on the left side of your pump. It's gonna fit in here perfectly. Now's a great time to push your diaphragm in. Gonna push it all in place. Sort of pushing it down, working it into its groove. It'll be obvious when it's in there. Okay. Now that that's all in place, we put the poppet back in. And remember, spring goes there, and the other part faces downward. Spring right on top. You have to sort of just take your time and uh, line everything up just perfectly. Put this back on your pump. Do you see that round spot right there? That means that's where that little dot is, right over that spring. So come straight down, line it up, standing right over it. Just sort of wiggling it down. And uh, now that's in place. I'm just sort of looking off to the side. You can see a little bit of a gap. And as I tighten down the screws, they got you closed right up. Really a piece of cake, folks. So anyway, it's not usually a pump problem. Usually uh, just something gets sucked into the debris. Uh, I don't supply filters with the pump. I just make sure my chemistry is clean. Uh, but if you decide to put a filter on it, make sure it's in great shape. Because if you get a piece of plastic that chips off or deteriorates for whatever reason, now, that being a hard product, getting into the pump might damage your diaphragms and totally wreck your pump. So, be careful and pick and choose regarding uh, the filters that you put on here if you choose to. Also, a lot of your filters might deteriorate in the presence of some of the chemistry. Um, like if it was a brass filter, it might deteriorate because of caustic or acids. And uh, you don't really want that to get into your pump. And these I don't over tighten, I just snug them up. Okay. Never over tighten anything. Plastic breaks that way. So, guys, that's how you clean out a diaphragm pump. Chemistry comes in, exits that way moves up and down just like your power wash pump. If there's any debris in there in your power washer, it's going to pulsate. In this case, you won't get prime and you won't push. Have a great day.